There we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Needle Bug. This is Karen. We're here today to talk a little bit about how to wash your needlework. Um, those that have been following me know that we just finished Stitcher's Retreat. Uh, the end of last week, so it is time to wash it and get it all ready to go down to Sherry at Total Framing and have her work her magic. So, first things first, what do I use to wash my piece? Some people use Dawn dish detergent, and that is perfectly fine. Uh, some people use Orvis or OxyClean or whatever. So today I'm going to talk about what I use, which probably is a little bit different. And look, you can see my camera takes to my chest for when we get to the next part. Um, what I use is this, Dreft Laundry Detergent, because it has what they call sodium perborate. And that is an oxidizing agent, not a bleach but an oxidizing agent, and that helps to clean to clean your needlework. For those of you who are from my era, you're going to remember this because back in the day when we had cloth diapers, this is what we washed our diapers in. So that's what I use, Dreft Laundry Detergent. Buy it in any supermarket. It is readily available. Doesn't take much, just takes a little bit. In fact, this is a pretty full container yet, and I've had it for years to wash everything. The other thing I use, and if you're afraid of um, your colors running, the other thing that you can get is a product called Synthrapol. S-Y-N-T-H-R-A-P-O-L. And what this does it removes excess dye from hand dyed fabrics. So when some when our dyers are dyeing floss or fabric or whatever, there's always these extra dye molecules that are attached to the fabric. And that's okay, you even see it say you get a new pair of, of jeans and you wash it for the first time and your water turns a little blue. Okay, that blue is the excess dye that can reattach to your fabric and that's what gives you the spots from the dyes running and reattaching. This product prevents that. This was recommended to me many years ago by Vicki Clayton and this is what she, this is what she recommends to use to prevent those dye molecules from reattaching to your fabric. Okay? So you can buy it on Amazon. This is 16 ounces and it lasts, you don't need much, it lasts a very, very long time. So I use these two products in combination. I use the Dreft and I put a little bit of Synthrapol in just to be sure that it's not going to run. Okay, so the next thing, you want to get a towel ready, a regular terry towel, bath towel. You want to get one of those ready so that you will have that once your product, your piece is clean and rinsed well. So what we're going to do, and now I'm going to switch you to my webcam that is in fact attached to me, as you can see. And I'll move it up a little bit here. So pardon the jiggles. And we're going to come over here to the sink and close the drain, make sure my sink is clean. I have to pull out my hose here. And we want to fill it with water that is between 90 and 140 degrees because that's what's going to take out the gray lines. Okay, so I'm waiting till my kitchen is like the end of my hot water loop. Ah, there it comes. So we're going to fill it up here. I hope that doesn't squirt out. And while that's filling, we're going to add 
just a little bit. Oh, that's probably not enough of the draft. Uh, just a smidge. And here's my terry towel ready for when we're done. And we're going to add just a smidge of Synthrafol. Okay. So that's going to get, make some nice bubbles. And I think we want that a little hotter. So I hope you guys are seeing this okay. Never before have I had a camera pin <laughs> to my chest. But that's okay. We're going to do whatever works here. Okay. So this can, this can be hot. You know, 90 to 140 degrees is a pretty nice temperature. Okay, so I probably don't need more water than that. So let's stick that back in. And then you just take your piece, open it up, and dunk her in. Okay, you want to get everything wet. Now, you don't want to be wringing it because that... Uh, messes up your stitches. So you just want to put it in the water, swoosh things around, let me readjust my camera here, there we go, swoosh things around and you want to keep it hot enough You know, I do the pick it up and put it down thing quite often. Now, to get the gray lines out, this is going to take, uh, keep putting some hot water in here. This is going to take about an hour. So we're going to let it soak for an hour. And I'm hoping, and we'll get to see that when we get to the ironing part, I'm hoping that this washing is going to take out those uh, column lines that I was seeing. Remember I showed you some column lines when we did the last, when I did the last video? So, okay. And I like doing it here in the sink because then I can keep adding the hot water that takes the lines out and you get to realize just, look at that, just how dirty this piece was after five years of stitching on it. And two years. It's only been in here a few minutes. Now, I will also mention to this, if you're washing other pieces of needlework, that, in fact, I do this with my hard hanger pieces, you know, if, especially if they got kind of dusty, grungy. Um, you can let something soak in this for days, and it is not going to hurt it, but you can just soak and change the water and soak some more and change the water until the piece is clean or until the lines disappear you know i'm especially concerned about these lines in the in the lamp like are they going to all come out so what i'm going to do now that uh, we have it in our soapy water it's warm you know i've Shushed it around. That's a good Pennsylvania Dutch word, shush. <laughs> okay. We are just going to let it soak in here for a bit. 
So I am going to put you on pause and um, dry my hands first. You get a, as my daughter used to call them, wafer towels and dry my hands. And I'm going to put you on pause and we will come back in about an hour's time and see where we're at, where we're at. And yep, the camera will stay taped to my chest for this hour because <laughs> I'm not going to retape it again. So here we go. I'm going to pause and I will see. Okay, before I pause, if your water starts to cool off, just add more hot water. You want to try and maintain that between 90 and 140 degree temperature so that the lines do come out. Okay, so we'll be back in about an hour and I will see you then. Okay, folks, we're back. It's been about an hour and let's see. All the lines are gone. So now your next step is to get rid of this water. And we're going to start rinsing. So you want to make sure that you rinse really well so that you get all the soap out. Soap out of here. And then we're going to fill it up again with clean water. And that's just It's just here. I can't let my tape come and move off my chest. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is let this water out again, and we're just going to keep. Going like this. Reasonably sure all the soap is out. I'm not seeing any bubbles anymore. 
So we're going to call that good enough. And now the thing you don't want to do is wring this like a dish rag. But you can squeeze. You can squeeze like this to get any excess water out. But you don't want to wring it out like you would a dish rag. And then the next thing you're going to do is lay it on a, t on a towel like so. Okay. And then when it's on this towel, you're going to start to roll it like a jelly roll until you have it all rolled up. Okay. And you're just going to keep pressing on it to get the excess water out. So with that, I'm going to pause you again and we're going to move to the ironing board. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here we are at the ironing board. And as you see, it was rolled up. Okay, so now I'm going to unroll it. I've gotten as much excess water out as I can. And I'm going to get rid of that wet towel. And I padded my ironing board with several layers of bath towels and I'm going to lay my piece with the right side against the towels and I'm going to begin ironing on the back. Okay, so as I iron, now what you can do, you can either start ironing right away or you can let it dry a little bit on its own before you start ironing. But you want to then iron it till it is dry, no matter which way you go. This way, and especially with the thickness, it takes a little bit more time to iron. But what I'm going to do is just keep on pressing. I have my iron set on the cotton setting and what I try to do when I do this is block it right away. So I want to pull it into and try and iron it into the shape that it's supposed to be and as you see I tend to press pretty hard in every direction and I'm hoping that that's going to pull out some of these uh, um, oops, some of these grid lines but this is the last step then you want to iron to get it as dry as you can and I'm going to tell you straight up front it's going to take a while so be prepared to stand here at your ironing board for quite some time because first of all this is a humongous piece second of all it's really wet <laughs> even though we tried to get as much excess water out as we could however it does appear that all the gray lines are gone and what I'm going to do then when I'm done ironing it is before I pack it up to send to Sherry at Total Framing, just to be sure that it is completely dry. I'm going to clip it probably to a hanger and let it hang uh, for a day or so before I pack it up. And that way, I'm sure that it is going to be as dry as we can get it. But 
basically guys this is all there is to washing a piece simple it's just time oh it's just time consuming boy oh boy it got warm here today in this hour that I was waiting for this to uh, to soak my car was being inspected so we ran we ran to get my car and oh my goodness it's warm out it's wonderful I'm so over winter but you see it's just a matter of keep your iron moving keep going I can feel it's really damp yet so and this is a dry iron there's no steam uh, you don't want steam that'll just keep <laughs> making your piece wet again so you certainly don't want steam now just out of curiosity because I don't know if you can see you can see my lines here on the back the way I stitched let's see if they show hmm I think they're coming out on the front I'm not where I ironed I barely see them anymore so that's a that's a good thing so ironing does help get rid of some of those those column lines unless you have really really bad ones and I'm hoping and I'm pretty sure Sherry will be able to pull the rest out when she stretches this over a frame but this is what you do you just keep on ironing keep your iron moving pull it to the dimensions yeah I made my iron a little bit hotter I turned it up to the linen setting now But be prepared to, especially with these big pieces, to spend a good bit of time. Now, I'm going to move this a little bit. And this is just for the sake of getting the worst out all the way over the whole thing. And then I'll work my way. I'll go back up to the top and start again. So it gives it a bit of an opportunity to dry a bit on its own as well as the iron helping it to dry okay so i and like i said once it's once it's iron dry i would let it hang for a day or so or even lay on a table. I would have to hang this up because if I let it lay on a ta table, you know what's going to happen. The cats are going to be upon it quite quickly because every time I laid it out to uh, take a picture, the cats thought it was a nice little place for them to want to take a nap. And no, no, no. no. We don't want that. There's enough specialty fibers in this <laughs> without adding any more. So we're just going to keep on going. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the whole ironing process. I am going to get this bottom end here yet just to show you. You know, you want to just make sure you're pulling things that they're going to go flat because sometimes our fabric being in hoops, hoops, hoops and Q snaps does get 
a little misshapen. But you make sure that you are pressing it on the wrong side on the back and that you have your ironing board padded with a few towels and then any stitches that bothered you that you thought were maybe crushed should all be popping right back up. Okay, so rather than you stand here and watch me iron, which is like standing and watching paint dry, I'm going to end this here and that's how I wash my pieces. So I hope that helps each and every one of you. Here I am again. There we go. I hope that helps everybody that you got the idea of how to wash your piece. It's really not hard. It's really very simple. It just takes time. So you're going to wash it in 90 to 140 degree water. I use Dreft and Synthropol. I let it soak until it was clean and the lines came out, which was about an hour. After that, rinse it well so that you're sure all the soap is out. Once the soap is out, lay it on a bath towel, roll it like a jelly roll. Press as much water out as you can at that point. Do not, do not wring it like you would a dishcloth. That's just going to put wrinkles back into it. So put it on the towel, do it like a jelly roll. Either let it dry for a while in the towel and then iron it, or bring it to your ironing board and start ironing dry. Let it hang for a day or so to make sure that it is completely dry because you don't want to, okay, if you're framing yourself, you don't want to frame it right away and, with the, and take the risk that, you know what, maybe it's a little damp in there yet. And since it's damp and you put it in the frame, it may get some mold. So you don't want to risk that. And this is going down to Sherry at Total Framing in Virginia. So I don't want it to be damp when I wrap it in or place it in a plastic bag so that should it rain or anything that it doesn't get wet and ruined. You know, that could also foster some mold if it's still damp. So you don't want to do that. So let it hang or lay it out somewhere for a day or two before you do anything further with it and then frame it up or send it off to the framers and you're good to go. So I hope this helped. If you have any further questions, please leave me, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you all can wash your own needlework from this point forward. So have a great rest of your week and I will see you next time. Bye.